Welcome my fellow friends to the third week of the Aviation News Summary. So to kick this week off, British Airways announced that they will be painting one of their 747-400s in a Bowak retro livery. The aircraft will live in the paint shop in Dublin and arrive into Heathrow on February the 18th, which is just a few days after the 50th anniversary of the first 747 flight. The 747 is getting treated with delivery which was delivered almost 20 years ago. There's also been speculation that a 787 could be painted in a BL retro livery and the airline replied, you'll not hear any arguments against this from us. It's the centenary next year so you never know. On the same day, Delta's first A33900neo rolled out the paint shop in Airbus Toulouse's plant. It happened to be the same day they confirmed an order for 10 additional A330neos and I have to say, the aircraft looks pretty good. It was revealed on Tuesday the airline suffered $64 million or £50 million of damages after drone activity sent Gatwick Airport into a nosedive. The airport was shut down for 33 hours just before Christmas, EasyJet lost £15 million and stated that the cancellation of over 1,000 flights was a wake-up call to the British airports. Out of the 140,000 affected passengers, 82,000 of them were EasyJet passengers and Gatwick is planning a drill to improve its response to similar threats in the future. Now this story really shocked me, but Lufthansa is retiring its Junkers GU-52 aircraft. The airline still operates the 83-year-old aircraft on leisure flights. With a range of 825 kilometers, the aircraft which was built in 1936 can fly 16 passengers and also 4 crew. The aircraft has been carrying around 10,000 passengers per year for the last few decades. A flight on a propeller plane won't come cheap as a 30 minute round trip will cost you upwards of $150. But come on, it's got to be worth it, right? Tuesday through Wednesday had over 2,300 flight cancellations due to a storm in northeastern America. It was so bad that airlines weighed fees for rebookings. Detroit was hit particularly hard since all flights were halted late on Tuesday night due to icy conditions before resuming after 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Over 130 departures and arrivals were grounded at Chicago O'Hare Airport. Now, Virgin Australia has voiced their concerns over proposed Qantas Cathay Pacific codeshare on Australia to Hong Kong routes. They claim it's an unnecessary expansion of both Qantas and Cathay Pacific's market power to the detriment of the travelling public. They also state it would diminish competitive forces in the market and it could lead to higher fares, with the implications for Australia's tourism and trade. On Thursday, All Nippon Airways announced direct flights from Japan to Chennai in India. Now, ANA already serves Delhi and Mumbai, however they stated it's hard to ignore the growth potential of Chennai and when the nearby cities of Bangalore and Hyderabad are factored in, the case for expansion becomes overwhelming. Now, ANA already serves 45 destinations currently, yet it is a 5-star airline, making it the second largest airline in Japan based on destination numbers and the largest based on fleet, with over 200 aircraft in service. Cebu Pacific received their first AF-21neo on Friday. They are the largest low-cost carrier in the Philippines and currently have 43 A320 family aircraft and 8 A330-300 jets. They ordered 32 A321neos from Airbus and they will receive 5 A320neos on lease. The A321neo is configured in a 236-seat layout. Now, IAG have announced that they are no longer interested in submitting a bid for Norwegian Airlines, it said on Thursday. The group holds a 4% stake in the company but they're looking to sell it. Now, this is a major blow for Norwegian as the airline seeks to curb its ever-growing losses. Only last week, Norwegian announced that they will be closing their bases in Mallorca, Gran Canaries, Tenerife and Rome to cut their costs. And finally, the A33900neo has gained an ETOPS rating beyond 180 minutes from the European Aviation Safety Agency according to Airbus. This would allow it to fly over water for more than 180 minutes from the nearest unusable diversion airport, meaning that it can fly more or less to anywhere on the earth. So there you go captains, that was a brief look at the aviation news of this week. I have to say that this week hasn't been quite as interesting compared to previous weeks, but we take what we get. Now if anything particular stood out to you, then by all means do share it with us in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys, as always leave a like and subscribe and I hope to catch you guys in the next video.